Welcome back my fantastic friends. This is Master Temple here and we're going to learn today how to paint a big grand mountain. Okay, these are the painting utensils, the brushes and the knives that we're going to be painting today. And the colours that we're going to be using, they're in the description. Now this is the canvas, it's a 10 by 12 and it's coated in a thin, even layer of liquid white. Now with a 1 inch brush we're going to touch in the magenta paint, very little paint on the paintbrush. And we're just going to wisp in a nice little sky. Now this magenta paint, it's an oil paint, we're doing an oil painting today. We're just going to float in a nice little colour, a little glow in the sky. We don't want too much, a lot of it will get covered up by the big mountain that we're going to paint. So we're just wiping the brush down at the bottom, we're going to have some water down here. I think we'll enjoy this one. Okay. Let's tap in some phthalo blue. So on the same dirty brush, we're not cleaning it yet. We're just gonna tap in a tiny touch, only a tiny touch, we don't need much, of phthalo blue. So there's magenta and phthalo blue on the paintbrush. We'll start in the top corners, that's where it'll be the darkest. And that's what we want. We want dark corners that will draw your eye into the center of the painting. And we'll bring this blue paint all the way down to the magenta and we'll blend the both together that easy we don't want much of a sky i say we're going to concentrate on making these big grand mountains and if you follow these steps we can do that you can do it i'm sure you can okay so we're going to come back in now with a dry brush this is just um, a foliage brush that i've picked up and we're just going to blend these two together you can use any kind of brush really but this one was tanned and it's a quite nice one got a nice handle on it and we're just going to blend this sky together so there's, you can't tell where one colour starts and the other colour stops. Nice, subtle, gentle little sky. That easy. Okay, we're going to darken the corners a little bit. Just pick a bit more blue up and just darken that corners. As I said before, dark corners equals your eye going straight to the centre. Nice little trick there. That's what we're going to do. I'm going to have some water down here, so we'll pull some water into the bottom. So just a little bit of phthalo blue down here. So those who were expecting the master paints, the masters, that nice series that we've done, we're going to continue that some sometime into the year. We've got one or two good ideas, some I've already painted, but we're just going to focus on doing a few tu tutorials. <laughs> it's easy for me to say. I'm going to, tutorials I need to put my teeth back in okay so the water down here we just blended that out we might even touch a little bit of white into the middle just to sparkle it up a little bit and we, we may even put a little bit of tiny green in there a bit of viridian water is usually a bit of a greeny color so let's grab some green not much not much just a little touch then we can blend all that out and it's easy to blend this out because we've got the liquid white underneath if we didn't have liquid white on the canvas oh we'd be stressing okay let's clean the brushes now so this is the low odor white spirit i use in the bottom bottom of the tub we have got a little rack and what we do is we take our paintbrush scrub it against the rack this is dirty paint uh thinner by the way i i have been doing a, a few paintings with this paint thinner sweep off the excess knock it off the brush and then just beat it against that little plastic bar i have in the bottom of a bucket and then i of course i dry the brush on a paper towel that's all we need to do at the end of the paintings at the end of the sessions that i've done i will wash them out in clean clean paint thinner and i use odorless paint thinner because it doesn't smell so much and and if you're painting in a, in a kitchen or in, in your house, you don't want the, the smell of, of paint fumes, really. Okay, let's make this mountain. So this is a mountain mix I've made up. It's, it's blue, black, a little bit of crimson in there. And we're just going to scrape off the palette knife through a thin layer of paint. And we've got that nice little roll right on the edge of the palette knife. Now let's decide where this mountain's going to live. It's going to live right up here. It's going to live off center and above the horizon. And we're going to make a massive range today. So we're going to just keep cutting that little roll of paint on the knife. And all we're bothered about is the top edge of the mountain. We're not bothered what's happening inside the mountain. Not yet, anyway. 
All right, so we're just going to lay in some very basic shapes. Just some very basic mountain shapes. Like loose triangles, that's all it is. You can't get this wrong. We'll come in a, a little bit there, just, just like so. Just like that. And then we'll pull down this, this mountain colour. Scrub it in the bottom. And then we're going to try and scrape off all the excess paint. Just paying close attention to that top outline, that edge. And as you can see, the magenta is just glowing behind this mountain. Alright, so with the brush that we use to, to blend the sky together, we're just going to pull out and remove excess paint. That's all we do. And this, this, this also lays out where as mountains are going to is going to be we, we can we can look at the highlights and the shadows just by these brush strokes and then we'll blend this down into nothing and as we know if we look at a mountain in its entirety it is more distinct at the top than it is at the base at the base we'll have we'll have mist and fog all these diffusing things okay now we're going to put a bit of reflection in here in this water and all we do is just try and paint the mountain very loosely, very loosely, upside down. Now you can't get this wrong. All you need to do is put basically where these peaks are, and I'm just outlining this with a knife. I'm just going to put where these basic peaks are. They don't have to be an exact duplicate of what's above the waterline. Just something that similar resembles the mountain we're going to come back and diffuse this we're going to diffuse this at some point make it look like watery ripply effects so that's all we need to do and then we'll just come back in and we'll just fill in these these outlines that we've just just created now in some cases if you really wanted to make this a pristine reflection where the water's not moving, it might be beneficial to take the canvas off the easel and flip it upside down. We may do that one day. We may do that one day. That's a that's a cracking idea. Okay, so with that brush, all we're gonna do is just drag out, drag out the very little paint that we put down. Just like that. And then blend that into the foggy misty area at the base of the mountain and as you can see it's not an exact copy of what's above the waterline but it's close enough for what we're going to do and anybody could do this if you've got the utensils you've got the desire to create you can do it okay so we're just cutting off a little roll of white paint this is titanium white i'm going to start on this big peak and then just very lightly no pressure at all all we want to do is touch the canvas with the, that little roll of paint the knife does not touch the canvas at this time and we're just going to lay in some snow on these mountains just like that very gentle very very gentle here and we'll just keep going back and cutting that nice little roll of paint off the palette. See, I use very little paint on, on the paint knife. And I find this little knife, you can get different size knives, but this, this little one is ideal for this. It gets very little paint on there and you can make all sorts of nice little peaks, little breaks in the snow where the mountain rock is showing through. And that's what kind of effect we want. We shouldn't be scared of painting mountains. They look monumental. They look amazing when done. And we should not be scared of painting them. So just very lightly, very lightly, just the paint on the knife is touching the canvas. Now let's make some shadow colour. So we've mixed a cool blue with a bit of phthalo blue and white. That's all it is. And again, we scrape off that little roll of paint. There's several ways how you can load this palette knife. But this is the, the most beneficial way I've found of, of, of doing, doing it. And then on the opposite side of these peaks, all we're doing is laying in 
some shadow colour. Same thing again, same principle. Little amount of paint, very light touch. Now you can even use the small edge of the knife. Just come in here and really sneak in there and we'll put some put some shadow colours on this peak as well. Just like that. We don't want we don't want any peaks being left out. There's nothing worse than a cross mounted. <laughs> okay. And on this big one, now you can see this flat edge there. I don't particularly like mountains that have um, a real flat, sharp edge to them. So what we'll do when we come back with a highlight, we'll just wobble that, that line there. Just wobble it a little bit so it's not exactly straight. But if you want it exactly straight, that's completely fine. You do that. You do that. And we'll just put some shadows in here. And remember, every little peak, every little bump needs its own shadow, or it won't work. Again, just very lightly, very lightly. Minimum amount of paint on the palette knife. Here we go. Just like that. So gentle. Just be so gentle with this. We can get cross with the brush and beat the brush up <laughs> when we're cleaning it, but... When we're painting mountain highlights and shadows, we need to be very gentle. So we can come back with the titanium white paint and just reaffirm these edges. And you can make all sorts of wonderful, wonderful effects. Look at that. So I've just diffused that sharp edge. And there we go again. And it makes it look a little bit more natural makes the mountain look a little bit more natural and then we'll put another one there I grabbed a bit of magenta there by accident so that's no problem that's no problem it will look like the magenta in the sky is is hitting that nice white snow on the side of that mountain and then we'll come down here and then we'll just layer in some paint this paint will be very thick you'll be able to feel the snow once it's dried it may take several days to dry as well. And we're working on the angles of these mountains. So we're just basically pulling down to the right hand side when we're putting highlights on. And basically pulling down to the left hand side when we're putting shadows on. Now you've probably heard this before if you've watched me and you've watched other artists. I'm right handed so it is easier for me to paint the highlights on the uh, on the on the right hand side of the the mountain let's let's join these two together so all we need is that little roll of paint and we can join these two peaks together look like they're holding hands eh <laughs> okay again it's just a small amount of paint on the paintbrush just a tiny amount and then on these on these reflections all we need to do is just tap in we don't really need to work on the major parts of the reflection. We're just going to tap in a tiny amount of white on the highlight side of these reflections. Not much. We don't need much. Reflections are usually darker than the, uh, than the object they're reflecting. So we don't want much. We'll put some on here. Again, a little tiny cut of paint. We'll just pop that in, just like so. And then we'll put some shadows in. Again, just little gentle taps. Little gentle taps. We're not looking for perfection, because this is going to be diffused in the water. In fact, we'll probably paint. We'll probably paint some some foothills at the base of this mountain. So some of this might get covered up. But there we go. Just a little tiny touch here and there. So gentle, so gentle. That's it. And you can do this. I'm sure you can. I'm sure you can. Anyone with a desire to paint and create can do this. Now, with a dry brush, all we're going to do is just flick up. Flick up. That's all we're doing. Forgive me for getting my hand in the way. 
it usually happens, we're just going to lightly flick up, hardly touching the canvas with a paintbrush. I know it's hard to see, but that's what we're doing. This is a very clean, very dry paintbrush. And then just gently across. And you see how we've diffused those reflections? So you really can't tell if they're wrong or right. That easy. That easy. And then let's just diffuse the base. So like we said, if we look at a, a mountain in its entirety, it is more distinct on the top than it is at the bottom. So let's just, just tap. All we need to do is just tap with that firm, dry paintbrush. And all this does is just, it just creates wonderful fog down at the bottom of these mountains. So when we put another layer on, it sort of separates it separates which is a very good neat little trick and then just gently take out the tap marks bring everything together now let's put a foothill in there so on a fan brush we're just getting some of that that shadow mountain color make it a little bit darker in, t in places just add a bit more thalo blue and then just going to tap in where a nice little foothill would live now look at that already we've painted for what 15 minutes or so and we've created this big wonderful epic mountain and you can do that just following those few little steps that we've taken you can do that now we're just going to darken this this little foothill here there's uh, lots of little trees little bankments all living far far away you can't tell individual trees you can't tell you know what's out here really it's just basic shapes and basic colors and that's all you see in nature things that are really far away basic shapes basic colors and that's all we need to do and this just lives on your fan brush all you got to do just shake them free now on a one inch paintbrush we're going to just diffuse the base of that list i know it's hard to see but we're just going to continue with the fog so all we're going to do is just maybe touch a little bit of titanium white into this paintbrush but just below that foot of the line, all we're going to do is just diffuse that. So then when we come back in now with the, with the fan brush, same colour on there, just darkened it a little bit more with a little bit more thalo blue. That's it. We're just going to pick out some individual humps and bumps that live down here. But you need that misty area between the, both of these planes. And it, this creates distance. So we'll just put that little bump up there. And then what we'll do, we'll come back in and we'll diffuse the base of this one. So on this paintbrush, just touch in just below, just below that, that line of trees, that line of hills that we put down there. Just touch in because there's a little bit of white paint on the paintbrush and there's a little bit of titanium white on the canvas, liquid white, we can diffuse. Now let's bring another, let's put another one in. So this is a little bit darker. I've touched a little bit of black now into that into that colour. Not clean the paintbrush yet. We don't need to worry about cleaning the paintbrush. All sorts of colours will come out the paintbrush as we continue to tap. And we've just created another, another layer. Now let's diffuse the base of this one one more time. Just touch just below, just below that line. We don't want to diffuse the top. And that will create mist and fog that live down there. Now let's reflect some of these. We don't want to carry on putting all these little foothills in. Even though it's fun and looks good, we don't want to carry on doing that. So we're going to grab some of this dark paint. And we're going to make some reflections of these little hills. We've got the reflections of the mountains in the water. And like I've said, we knew we were going to cover them up, didn't we? But it works. It works. And you can do it. It'll work for you. Give it a go. There's nothing stopping you giving it a try. Now with that paintbrush that we diffuse the base, we were just going to pull these reflections slightly down, taking care over as mountain reflections. We're just going to pull those straight down and then gently across, and that will create instant, instant reflections of these little foothills down here in the water. There's the liquid white. There's the palette knife, and we cut straight across this time. And right on the very edge of the knife, you can see some liquid white. So let's put in a little water line. This will separate the two dark colours and it will bring everything together. 
It will bring everything together. Now you want to keep your knife nice and firm and parallel to the base of the canvas. You don't want to run this water line uphill or downhill because it'll make like the water will be, be running away from you and that that's not nice. You want to keep the water in the painting. So just put it in a nice little water line, nice and easy. And if you get one that's too bright or too distinct, you just keep rubbing and it'll go away. It'll go away, it'll join the canvas and go away. Okay, so we, we keep the knife parallel, but we can work it so it looks like the water is slightly curved, you know, like there's a bank here that's slightly rounded, but we're still keeping that knife nice and flat nice and parallel to the base of the canvas and you can add in a couple of ripples here and there this is where the old trouts jumped out of the water to try to catch a fly <laughs> don't know if there's many flies where it looks pretty cold to me all right all right i hope you give this one a try it is very simple it looks difficult but it isn't now with a paintbrush, a little bit of dark colour, let's put some bushes on here. We'll, we'll have a nice tree on this on this left hand side. So let's mix up some paint to paint this tree. This is white and burnt sienna. Mm -hmm. And we'll take this paintbrush into the Van Dyke brown with a little bit of paint thinner. And then one side of this rounded paintbrush, we'll load it with that light colour. We've double loaded the paintbrush. Now let's Let's decide where this big tree is going to live. And if you want a big tree in your painting, put one in, put two in, put three in. If you don't want any in, that's fantastic. This has just been a mountain painting today. This tree is just a little bit of a brucey bonus. Now the light colour that's on the brush needs to be on the light side of the tree. And that's dictated by the, the highlights and the shadows in the mountain. And with one stroke, we can really create the highlight and the shadow of a tree trunk all in one go, that's sneaky, that easy. That's all we needed to do, just just load the brush full of brown paint, thin brown paint, and then all we're gonna do is just take one side of the paintbrush through, through that highlight color we made. That's it, that's all we need to do. Okay, now let's, let's get some thin color. So with some paint thinner and brown paint, we'll take the script liner brush, Twist it through the paint and it'll bring it to a nice sharp point. Let's put some little dead hanging down little branches on this little little tree. So we start in the middle and just flick out. Put some up here at the top. There we go. Now we could leave this just like this, like it's a tree that's passed away, but I'm, I'm, I've changed my mind. I think we're going to make like a Scots pine that lives out here. So we'll have some, some branches that reach out to the sky. Now you've got to forgive the arm, it does get in the way sometimes, but what I'm doing is that I'm just taking that thin paint, starting at a point in the tree or the branch, and I'm just making nice little twigs. That easy, just like that. And if you want this tree in your picture, by all means put it in, if you don't, that's happy days, that's happy days. Let's work on some foliage on these trees. Right, this is a little bit of Viridian, I'm going to take a little bit of thalo blue in there. We'll touch a little bit of sap green in from time to time. And we're pushing the paint. That'll create a nice little ridge of paint on the paintbrush. And we'll just touch the canvas and push up slightly. And that will give us some nice U-shaped, some nice U-shaped um, leaves, branches, bunches of leaves. I don't know what they call them, but they look effective anyway. And every now and again, we'll touch that green paint into some into some white and just touch a few on the the highlight side these are usually quite dark and again it darkens that corner and takes your eye into the into the focal point of the painting you can do this now if you do try this please send me a picture via one of the social medias that i've got it's all the links are down in the description i would love to see you try this and how you found it it would, it would mean the world to me if you sent me a picture. It really would. Now this painting will go on my Etsy store. I've got an Etsy um, uh, shop. So it will go on there at some point when it's dried. Master Temple Arts, if you're interested. Or if you want to take a look at some of my other work. 
Now down here, we're just going to touch some of that that light green, blue paint, just down here. Just a few little taps. We're pushing down this time. Create nice little shrubs down here. Nothing too strenuous. Nothing too strenuous at all. Let's sign this little this little painting. So thin red paint, paint thinner and some cadmium cadmium red. It'll look, put my teeth back in. Nice sharp point on the script brush. And we'll sign this one down here. Now I just initial it in, in paint. I think my name's too long. But um I do I do sign I do sign the back of these paintings. So if you've enjoyed this this tutorial, please let me know. Please leave me a comment. Please leave me a like. Subscribe if you've not already subscribed. I do appreciate every single one of you. Now, until next time, my fantastic friends, do take care, stay safe, and as always, happy days.